Hello, Cobb Science. Today, we're going to be learning about life cycles. A life cycle is a series of changes in the life of an organism. And today, we're going to explore all different types of life cycles. First thing we're going to do today is we're going to check in with the Georgia Aquarium. That's right, you heard it, the Georgia Aquarium, and they're going to tell us all about the life cycle of a penguin. We're in the midst of nesting season and we've had a few chicks hatch this year. We're really excited to watch them grow, develop, and then get to know their individual personalities. African penguins, like many other penguins, are monogamous. So that means they pick their partner, they will build a nest, establish the territory, and then raise their chicks in that particular area. Mid-November is kind of the kickoff for our breeding season. And to start that, we'll bring out a bunch of dried lavender. Um, we'll break it up and kind of put it in piles out there on exhibit, and the birds will go and grab it to utilize as nesting material. We'll begin checking regularly for eggs, particularly if we see birds that are kind of hunkered down on that nest. And if we do find their eggs, we'll go in, we'll take their egg, we'll give them a dummy egg, and we'll take the real egg and place it into one of the incubators. That way we can control the temperature, we can control the humidity of that to give every egg a fighting chance. So for this chick, on day 35, we moved him into a separate incubator, and we noticed that the chick was peeping, it had internally pipped. Can you hear it, Emily? Mm -hmm. We weren't noticing any external pip, but we saw the internal pip, and after about 24 hours, which is a pretty long time for the chick to have internally pipped, but showing no signs of external pips, we assisted, we gave him a little hole and then put it out on habitat with the parents that were gonna raise him. African penguins are critically endangered, and so I know that they are one of the uh, 10 species or animal groups that the AZA has chosen to participate in their SAFE program, and it's a really awesome opportunity to see the dedication of a team, um, not only from the George Aquarium where we work, but with all of the organizations that we partner with and other AZA organizations, um, that we are all kind of in this fight together and we are dedicating our time and our energy and our money to make sure that this species does not go extinct. Within the next 10 years, this species, if continuing on the trend, could be completely wiped out. He surprised us all and was bouncing back really, really quickly and started to show really, really good signs. And so after two days of being handled around the clock, we decided that he was strong enough to go out on habitat with um, his foster parents and they were doing a pretty good job. And then after a few days, we did our afternoon check on him and pulled him out and he had that little gash in his stomach. And so since he had been up and down so frequently, we decided to just go ahead and pull him and set, set him up for success and give him that opportunity to, to thrive under our care and our watch in more controlled setting. And he's doing really awesome. Hey, Nugget. Hi. Hi. He's now eating every three hours about 9% of his body weight, and then between those, he's eating solid pieces of fish. So he's taking it down really, really well. Um, he's learning his response to us seems really positive thus far. How you doing? Hi. You hungry? So I'm just trying to stimulate his feed response. He's gonna open his mouth a little bit on his own. And then I can put the fish inside. There we go. Good boy or girl. So we don't know what you are yet, huh? If he were being raised by the parents, he'd be consuming a lot of broken up fish regurgitation. So he's already had a little bit of experience to it, but um, he's getting most of his calories from the gruel, which is just kind of a, a formula of fish and water and nutrients. So this is just like an extra little thing, getting him used to eating more solid food from us. Um, and acclimating to what he'll eventually be eating on a regular basis. We have found that his legs are kind of splayed out a little bit, which is not uncommon for birds that are hand raised. They're not moving around necessarily as much in the nest and because they're kind of flat and as their bellies begin to grow, it's not uncommon for those legs to splay. So what we've done is taken some vet wrap, just kind of put them together a little bit where we would like to see them go. He's got those on and we'll check periodically and see how he's doing. And there's already been a little bit of an improvement from 
yesterday to today. So it seems to be working, but their bodies are pretty malleable at this point. So we can go ahead and fix them up. Yeah, move around, kiddo. Strengthen those legs. He has really amazed all of us knowing what he has gone through and what the team has invested in him and to see his growth and progress uh, has really been remarkable. It's awesome to see a young, helpless little chick uh, with the help of a lot of people and a, a really dedicated team come through. Thank you for that update, Jason. The Georgia Aquarium has been such an excellent partner with Todd County Schools. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about several other life cycles. We're going to learn about the life cycle of a dandelion, the life cycle of a tree, the life cycle of a butterfly, the life cycle of a frog, and the life cycle of a chicken.
about several different life cycles. You're going to take the opportunity to research the life cycle of a plant or animal on your own. You can pick anything that you want and we're going to create a poster for your teacher.